Hello from the Strange School. In this video, I wanted to go over using arrays in Playmaker 1.8, which is the new version as of this time when I'm making this video. Before 1.8, in order to use arrays, you had to use the Playmaker add-on Array Maker, which is still available um, right now and has a lot more actions at this time than the built-in arrays. But the built-in arrays, you, you can still get a lot of stuff done. So I'm going to go over the usage of arrays here in Playmaker for people that have never used them before. So when you think of arrays, here we have some array actions here in Playmaker. What they really are are lists. And if you start researching, you might get confused with coding stuff because arrays are one thing and lists are another thing. And um, so we have arrays here. But all arrays are are lists. So they're groups of items in lists. So why would you want to list things? You would want to list things or put them together in one of these arrays if you wanted to sort through them, if you wanted to do something to each one of them, which is referred to as iterating. So if you want to iterate through a list of items. So what does that mean? Let's go look at it so hopefully you'll be able to understand it. But it's really, really, really powerful once you understand iterations and it'll save you a lot of time. So I just have this null object. I'm going to go create a new FSM and call it array manager like that okay and I'm just gonna call this first date init for initialize okay so we need to go make a new array so I'm gonna go into variables and go to array and let's just call it cubes okay so what this does now it looks like any other variable type but the power of it when you just look at it here is the size so it's a list so the size is the number of things in the list so I'm gonna say 9 and the type you can store all different variable types in these arrays but I'm gonna do game objects for now and I guess I have to go put the 9 in again but don't get this twisted the power of these arrays is that you can add and subtract things from them on the fly so I'll show you how to do that in a bit I just wanted to show you the different ways to add things to arrays so now this array is has a size of nine but if I press play you know there, there's nothing in it so we need to put something in it this way we're gonna do this manually first so I wanna put all these cubes in here so this is the simplest way to do it and this might work for some solutions but usually you're going to want to populate your array during runtime you're gonna add and subtract it you can clear it, you can sort it, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. So let's just go through this. Okay, so now if I press play, it doesn't look like anything really happens, but now we actually have these cubes in this array. So let's go do something so we can actually look at that just to see it happen. So let's just try this shuffle action. Now we select our array like any variable, and you can already see in here because I have debug on, you can see all the cubes in there. So it's showing us that this array does indeed have these cubes, which is exactly what we want. So I just wanted to show you that so you know that it's a list. It's just a list of these items. So how about we go through this um, after, I'll iterate after, I just want to show you another way to populate this. So let's go to zero. So now let's say you wanted these cubes to add themselves to the array. Let's go on each cube and let's make an FSM called adder like this. And add me. Let's do that. All right. So what we want to do during the runtime when we play the game, we want these cubes to automatically add themselves to the array that we have here on our game manager. So what we do is that we just want an array add um, action and it's going to ask us what array and it doesn't let us choose in order to have these cubes add themselves to our array that's on another game object we're going to have to make a global variable array so they can all access it so we're going to go to our global variables and let's go to array and let's call this cube01 array. Okay, and yes, I know how to use globals. 
And we can actually change the array type on the fly, but let's just go ahead and set it as a game object. So now we just have a global array, so all these um, cubes can access it. So in order for the cube to add itself, let's just go ahead and make an FSM. Let's call it adder. Let's call it state add me, because that's what it's going to do. And then we just want to go grab the array add action from our array category and choose our array, which is our cuber. And it's asking us what we want to add. So a real easy way to do this, so we can use it for all of them, is let's make a new game object variable and let's call it self and go back here and then look for our owner action, get owner. So this cube is going to get itself, store it as self, and then we can just do that. So now the array, it's going to add itself to that array. So if we go back over here and uh, let's just grab that array sort action just so we can see our array. I just want to look at it, see what's in it. So um, let's press play and oh, we can see that our array has blue. It has this one cube, so this did in fact work, right? You following along with me? Okay. So now that we know this one works, we can just copy this FSM, paste it on this one, 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 and go through and do that to all of them. Okay, like so. So now if we go back to our game manager and press play, we can see that now, hopefully it's all the cubes, have added themselves to our array. So, okay, now what do we want to do? We want to iterate through these cubes. So, how about we go and check the scale because some of these cubes are scaled differently. So, how about we'll iterate through, we'll go through all the cubes in our array and then we'll check to see if their scale is 1, 1, 1, which, let's see, we'll look at this cube. And this one's 1, 1, 1, the scale here. This one's not this one is not so we'll iterate through and we'll go through all the cubes in our list in our array and then if their scale is not one 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 we'll set it to one 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 how about that simple iteration so all right so what we're gonna do here is make a new state called iterate and I'm gonna create a transition to finished and just in my experience sometime like when these first uh, launch, it's going to add them, you know, it's adding them to the array. So if we go and iterate right away, uh, all the cubes might not be added. So I'm just going to add a weight of 0.1 here with finish. So it just waits for 0.1 seconds before it goes to start our iteration. So this is the powerful part of these arrays and the action you're gonna wanna use to do this is get next so in my opinion this is the coolest action for using arrays so what it does it says each time this action is called it gets the next item from an array this lets you quickly loop through all the items of an array to perform actions on them so this is your iterator this is the cool thing so we want to select our cube array and um, we're just going to use two events actually let's go make a new one let's make loop so let's add that here, loop, and then finished. And then it's asking us for our loop event. This is our loop, and then finished, finished. Okay, so let me explain these. So the loop is what happens when it iterates through. It goes through each object. So it's going to loop, go to an object, come back. Loop, go through an object, come back. And then when it's gone through all the items in the array, it's going to do the finished. Okay, so we can do... I'm gonna do a fin state for finished and go here like this, okay? So now it's iterating through, right? It's getting it's getting each cube and we're gonna to wanna to do something to that cube. So we're gonna to wanna to keep it in a variable. So that's what this is here for. So let's go make a new game object var variable and let's call this current cube like that. And let's set it to here. So what's gonna happen is it's going to iterate, it's gonna go through every cube in our array and each time it goes through, it's gonna store it in this current cube. 
So now that we're ready to iterate through our array list, how about we give these cubes different tags using our tag manager, and then based on their tag, like let's say we have a tag good and a tag bad, and then we'll iterate through and we'll get the items that are tagged bad and we'll delete them from the scene. How about that? Sound good? Okay. Let's go and create new tags. Let's create a good tag and a bad tag. Okay, so let's just randomly go and say, you're good, you're good, you are bad, this guy is bad, both of these greens are good, this one red is is good, and these other two are bad. Okay, so these all have different tags. All right. So what we want to do, we're going to loop through and we're going to get the tag. Okay, so we're storing our game object that we're, that we're currently iterating through or that we picked as current cube. So we want to do a get tag. Okay, so the game object we want to get the tag on is our current cube. That's what this is selecting. And then let's store its tag as a string like that okay so we're getting it we're storing its tag get tag and then is cube good we're gonna compare the string to good so we have this here and then um, this is asking a question so it would help us in our logic if we had a true and false event to choose from because that makes the most sense true and false okay so our loops gonna go through get the tag it's gonna keep going it's gonna check if the tag is good so to do this we want a string compare okay so the string we want to compare is our tag and we want to check if it's good if it is good that's true if it is not then it's false okay so we're getting our tag and let's just go make sure our tags are lowercase. Okay, lowercase, that's good. All right, so then here, if it's not good, we want to delete it. Delete cube. All right, so that's false. If it's true, we can go back through our loop like that. And then once it's false, we want to go through there. So let's just go and grab a destroy object. Okay, so it would be current cube. All right, now before we run this, let's just go through. Let me try to organize this stuff so you can see it better. All right, so when this runs, first all these cubes are going to add themselves to our array. This thing's just going to wait 0.1 seconds to make sure that they're all added. And then our get next is going to grab the first item in our array, store it as current cube. And then it's going to do the loop. That's what it does when it goes through its loop. It's going to get the tag of that object. It's going to compare it to good. If it's equal, it's going to do true, which will have it go back here, and then it'll loop through again. If it's not true, it's false. And then it's going to delete that cube from our scene and then iterate through. And then it knows, so when it's gone through all the items, it's going to go and do this finished. Okay? So let's press play and see what happens. Play. Oh, there we go. So it deleted the bad cube. So if we go through and look, this one's good, this one is good, this one is good, this one is good. Okay, so it happens super fast, but if we go through, let's go and put a breakpoint here so you can see what it does. So it's iterated through, it's grabbed a cube, stored it in here, and then it's gone through again, and again, and again, and again, and again and again and again and then this thing knows when it's gone through the whole list and then it goes to our finished and so that mean hopefully it seems like a big deal you can see the possibilities here but using this get next iteration is super powerful um, when you're working with arrays and what we also could have done let me show you something else let's make a new array on this game object and let's call it bad cubes okay 
and we're just going to say game objects. I don't have to do that. It can, it'll know what kind it is when I send something to it, but I'm just going to do that. So bad cubes, right? So how about before we delete the, the bad cubes, let's add them to a new array called bad cubes. Let's go like this. Add. Okay. And we want to add to bad cubes and we want to add our current cube. Okay. So uh, let's go through here and then we'll sort our bad cubes just so we can see them. Okay. I'm going to turn this breakpoint off. So now... Or you know what? They're all null because it deleted them. So then we don't want to delete them then because then this won't work. Let's go deactivate them. Or uh, turn off their mesh renderer. Let's see. Mesh. Um, activate. Deactivate game object. Let's see if this works. So we want to add it. And then let's go current cube deactivate okay this might not work too if they're deactivated oh there we go okay so we don't see them in the scene anymore because it deactivated them um, but we added them to our array list so now here's our bad cubes so now we have them in this list they're turned off but let's see do they show up in here oh they do so you can see them here too I just wanted to show you that they have indeed been added to this other array so Hopefully you're starting to see the power of these, right? Because since they can do this stuff on the fly, they can sort things. If you go look at these actions, you can add things, remove them, sort things, reverse them. So if, for things like high score, you could add all your scores, then sort them from highest to lowest, and then reverse them, do whatever you want. You can use length to count the number of items and do something based on the number. So... But this is the basics of using arrays, using this get next, this thing. I wish I didn't really learn this till I was using arrays for a couple months and I was building this like manually because I didn't know about this get next, but learn this get next. This is really, really important to know and just understand how this works. It loops through and then it knows when it's done and then it goes and does something else. So hopefully this was helpful. I just wanted to do a, um, a free tutorial on arrays since they're new to uh, Playmaker 1.8. You can still use Array Maker. I still like Array Maker because it has a lot more array actions. Hopefully, the developers will be adding those to the built in ones because it is nice having them as variables. But anyway, um, I'm M. Strange from the Strange School. If you're interested in learning uh, more about Playmaker and uh, even uh, the Asset Behavior Designer, I just did an AI class. Go check us out at thestrangeschool.com. And until next time, thanks for watching and bye.